and hopefully get some official news from what's happening on the ground. The agency is doing a methodical search at the school. We're trying to make sure that all our children are safe as they are in lockdown, and we're going to try to do an orderly fashion to bring them out of the school to ensure that they are brought to their parents. Okay? Once the search is completed, we'll make sure that all the students are transported on a bus on the south side of the school to the Mansfield Independent School District Center of Performing Arts at 1110 Debbie Lane. Prior to the students leaving the building in an orderly controlled fashion, we've got police officers that will take photographs of their identification so we make sure that we've got all the students accounted for in an orderly fashion. Now this incident, as tragic as it is, we take very serious in law enforcement. We do have a suspect who's identified, okay? What we believe happened preliminary is that there was a fight between a student and another individual in a class and a gun was used, and there are four victims. I'm here to identify a person of interest right now. It's Timothy George Simpkins. It's S-I-M-P-K-I-N-S. He is a black male, 18 years of age. We have a car that he is currently driving, or we believe is driving. It's a 2018 silver Dodge Charger. License plate P is in Paul, F is in Frank, Y is in Yankee, 6260. We currently have multiple agencies, including the U.S. Marshals Task Force, that is looking for this individual. Again, this is a collaborative effort between state, local, and federal agencies to bring this person to justice. I'm Tracy Aaron, the Chief of Police in Mansfield. I want to say thank you to all of the agencies. It's not just helping just this incident, but all of our other sister agencies here close. You know, Mansfield responded to this the same as all of the other agencies, and uh, and I have to assure you that, that the, the departments are doing a great job here in, in bringing all this to a, to a close. What's, what you're going to see now is that, uh, that, that there's going to be continued searches for our suspect. Uh, Chief has already told us what that looks like. We, we ask for our citizens' help to continue to, to search for that person and call in any leads that you may have. You, you should know at this point that this person is considered to be armed and dangerous, and I would suggest that you call 911 as soon as you see that person or you see that suspect vehicle. We are continually making those searches uh, throughout the state, as, as, it, as, it, as it turns out. Uh, be, be having the victims in your thoughts and prayers. Please lift those folks up in your prayers. Some of those uh, are already in surgery. So be thinking about those. Be thinking about our suspect and their family. We need to uh, we need to bring this to a to a safe resolution, and that's what our goal is. Thank y'all very much for being here, and thank you for your help. Thank you, Daniel Sesney, Grand Prairie Police Department. Uh, I'd like to echo the chief's comments with our thoughts and prayers to the families. I want you to know that the Grand Prairie Police Department's role today is is strictly in a support role. Although we believe the suspect is currently at large, you'll see the Grand Prairie SWAT team and, and the SWAT teams of our other agencies clearing the school to make sure there's no other additional dangers. The Grand Prairie Police Department is also actively involved in the search for the suspect, partnering with the United States Marshal Service and the Fugitive Task Force, and they are out as we speak looking for the suspect. Uh, as mentioned, this is a very large collaborative effort, and our goal is to make sure that all of the students here, uh, not just come out safe, but feel safe. So we're working toward that end as we speak. You should see very shortly a large contingent of students coming out orderly, loading onto the buses and moving to the location already uh, indicated. Uh, our recommendation that parents go to that location that, uh, that Chief Colby mentioned the address rather than coming to the school. Coming to the school here will just make things more difficult. So again, please go to the pickup location. Thank you very much. We'll not take any questions, but again, I just want to reemphasize that this is not a random act of violence. This is not somebody attacking our schools. 
this is a student, we believe right now, preliminary, that it was a student that got into a fight and drew a weapon. Chief, Chief do you know how he was able to get the weapon inside the school? I do not. We had two Mansfield Independent School District police officers that housed in this school. They were here and they were on scene immediately to render our sa uh, safety to our students. Are there metal detectors? I don't have that. When you talk about the victims and being hospitalized, can you confirm were they hospitalized with gunshot wounds? I, I can tell you that yes, uh, that I believe two of the uh, victims were uh, received gunshot wounds. To, to the severity, I don't have that information right now. And were these teachers students? We believe that three of the victims were students. One was an older person that may be uh, a teacher. There was a report of, uh, of a pregnant woman that was one of the four victims uh, that may have failed during the shooting but uh, received medical treatment, EMS here on scene, and was released. So that person is not in the hospital based upon the information that I have right now. Yes, I have a high confidence right now that uh, the, the shooter is not on the premises. Uh, I have a high confidence that it was only one shooter at this school. We want to continue to make sure that we lock down our students to make sure that they are safe. We have Graham Prairie Police Department, Mansfield Police Department, Arlington Police Department, and other SWAT teams that are methodically going through each of these rooms and releasing these children to make sure that we're safe. We want to make sure that we get identification from each of these students. We want to make sure that they don't have any weapons uh, on them themselves. So it's just a, a customary practice that we will do to make sure that everybody's safe before we get them out on the buses. Mr. Uh, Chief Colby, you mentioned Mr. Simpson, 18 years of age. He was in that classroom as a student fighting with someone else with that weapon. Is your understanding at this point? I. I, there was a video that I viewed, and he was in a classroom to what his student, whether he was a student or not. I don't have that information right now. Uh, we are going to release his photograph after this press conference, uh, and we are currently actively looking for him now. And was he able to escape the school because of the chaotic situation? I don't have those facts, but I do know that there's video. We're trying to review the video to where he came out. Uh, based upon the preliminary information he came out on the south side there was a vehicle that was identified i will tell you that one of the callers that called in uh, immediately identified him as a suspect in this in this shooting well, do you know if anyone was able to render aid to those victims before ems guy on the scene i do not but I, again i want to stress that we had two mansfield independent police officers on scene and they immediately responded to the threat situation and i'm sure that they uh, try to uh, minimize any type of uh, injuries for those individuals. Can I go back to that phone call a second? Was, was, was that a, a call essentially warning that this was about to happen? No, sir. It was not a call that was a warning. This was a call after the shooting happened. We got multiple 911 calls, and one caller identified the person of interest. Other students in the room at the time, or was it like just an empty classroom? Based on the video that I saw, there were other students in the classroom. When you say video, are you talking about surveillance video or possibly video captured by other students or teachers? Uh, the video that I saw looked like it was captured on a cell phone by other students. Did that video, sir, include the shooting in and of itself or the fight in and of itself? We've seen uh, at least one of those videos. The video included the fight. I did not see a video that it captured the shooting. So I'm sorry, just one more time. Could we get the name of the suspect and the victims right now? Uh, the victims? The victims I don't have. The suspect is on Twitter right now. Gotcha. And we'll release the photograph of uh, the suspect here uh, momentarily. The Chief, is there another video out there uh, from students that tried video? Would you want that video in hand? You guys want that video? Yes. Any video uh, that's taken of the incident, we would, we would ask any citizen or any student 
to make sure that they contact Mansfield Police Department or the Arlington Police Department uh, with any video that they have. I will let you know that the Arlington Police Department will handle the criminal investigation. And one more question about the suspect. Is he anyone that is known to your agencies? I don't have that information. Any more advice for the general public since you said he's armed and dangerous for the public at large? Yeah, I, I would say if anybody comes across this individual, please do not uh, make contact with him. If they identify the car, make sure that you call 911, have an appropriate police response, and, and let us bring this uh, situation to a conclusion uh, for the safety, safety of the public. And again, our hearts go out to those who are injured today and all the students that went through a traumatic incident at this school. Do you know what kind of weapon it was? I do not know what type of weapon it was. Speaking again directly to the parents, the students are about what's happening right now. Would you speak as best you can directly to them? You said not to come to the school. They should come to this off-site location. Could you repeat that information and give some sense that no one could hold you to? when they might be able to look their students in the eyes again. Yeah, we know that this is very traumatic for the parents right now. We know that uh, they're worried about their children and their safety for their children. Right now, we believe that the scene is secure. We're just making sure that we can orderly, in an orderly controlled fashion, make sure that we can identify all the students and make sure that we can account for everyone here. Then what we're gonna do Hopefully, within the next hour, I can go home to it, within the next hour, we're going to uh, orderly, controlled fashion, bring them to buses right here on the south side. And then we are going to bus them to the Mansfield Independent School District uh, Center of Performing Arts on Debbie Lane. We ask that all the parents please report there, and your students, your, your children will get off the buses, and then you can see them there. We have got uh, several of the students that we have uh, interviewed that were witnesses to this incident. So we're going to hold on to those children. Hopefully my detectives will allow them to call their parents. Uh, and I'm sure there are many, many of the students that have reached out to their parents and ensured that they are safe. And uh, they are locked in the rooms and police are going room by room ensuring that everybody is safe and no one else uh, is a sus suspect or person of interest in this area. It's a big school. Have you sense of how many students are in there today? I, I don't. I don't. Have the family of the victims have already been uh, contacted? That way parents already know that, you know, if, if they didn't get a call, then their, their children are fine? I don't have that information, but I, I would suspect that, yes, the parents have been contacted uh, and been asked to report to, uh, to see their loved one, uh, to be with them at the hospital, yes. Chief Aaron, are you aware of metal detectors at the school by chance? No, sir, I'm not aware. It's, it's Mansfield Independent School District is in charge of the school district itself, okay. and so I'm not I'm, I'm not certain of their safety measures. I didn't know if throughout the day today it's going in town to see if yeah. there's metal detectors. I, I have not noticed myself inside this building. Hi, Jeff Boshek with ATF. I'm the special agent in charge here in, uh, for ATF for the Dallas Field Division. We're obviously here today to support our state and local partners uh, in this tragic incident. You know, as, as a law enforcement officer and then as a parent, as a, with a student in Arlington as ISD, this is kind of your scariest uh, moment, right? And this happens not only with your what you do for your job, but when you have a, a wife who's a teacher here and, a, and several kids that, that go to school in the district. So we're here as soon as we get the information on this on this firearm. We're going to track it down and we'll figure out where this individual got this gun from. Our agents won't sleep working with our partners here to figure out how he got this weapon in his hand to come into school and cause this tragedy today. So we don't, I don't have much information I can give you on the, on the weapon. Obviously, we don't have that yet. We haven't been in the school to figure out uh, caliber of the weapon or anything like that yet. But as soon as we do, we'll have something to get out to you guys. So thank you. And to all the, to the, all the victims' families, we, 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 you're in our thoughts and prayers. So thank you. All right, guys, we got time for a few more questions before they got to get back and, uh, and continue working here. Well, but do you have a sense of how many shots were fired and how long the whole incident lasted? I don't. Uh, just based on the information, I know there were more than uh, more than two or three shots that were fired. Chief, you guys have a whole group surrounded and you've got some people, uh, U.S. Marshals outside the house, just about a few blocks from here. And does that, is that a shooter's home? Or what does that have to do with this? I do not have personally have the suspect or person of interest uh, address, so I wouldn't. I can't comment on that, that particular address. 
Anything else? All right, guys, thank you.